On this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, Kate and David talk about some of the stranger things that happen in Zelda games. Hello and welcome to another episode of Another Zelda Podcast. I am David Geisler, your co-host here with my co-host Kate Fisher. Kate, how are you? Hello. Whoa. Interesting, interesting introduction here. I try to change it up every time. Every time, yeah. Just so people know that they're not listening to the same episode over and over again. Is this the same episode? This this is exactly what he said last time. They just say hello. And then we talk (laughs) about video game stuff. It's weird. Oh boy, there are podcasts out there that say hello for 20 minutes. <laughs> Perhaps sometimes that's us. I hope not. Let's not do that. What are we talking about today, Dave? Kate, how was your week? How's oh. your day? Oh. <laughs> I mean. Let's talk about our personal lives for 20 minutes. I'm joking. No. Oh, my. we are already off the rails on this episode. I think it's I think we're getting a little excited cuz we're an episode away from the season finale. There's a little bit of like the last week of school right now in this episode, if I may, for me. I can't wait to be done talking to you. <laughs> yes. We are talking about Ganon uh, next week or in the next episode. And we'll be mm-hmm. sending out some tweets about that. Uh, maybe we can get some listener feedback on their thoughts on all the different experiences of Ganon. But tonight. The original bad boy. I guess so. Yeah. Oh, and and he was Ganon well, first. Oh, OK. Not good. Ganondorf until <laughs> he's, he's been a lot of different things. Uh, tonight we're talking about. What would you say? Funny moments in Zelda? Weird moments? Yeah, funny, little funny, little jokes, little gags, little Mm -hmm. nods, little innuendos, humorous moments. I was, we were trying to think of topics and I was like, this game has, it's not like laugh out loud funny, but every once in a while it'll do something that kind of makes you go, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) yeah, clever. Yeah, there's a lot of like underplayed weird moments or pieces of dialogue where you're like, if that means what I think it means, that's funny. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or like sometimes there's interesting timing. Wind Waker clearly went for the cartoon aesthetic. There are moments in Wind Waker that are very funny. Right. But there's also times where just the pacing's strange and it, and it makes you laugh a little bit. Or just a remark out of nowhere or remark breaking the fourth wall yeah. kind of thing. We've already talked a little bit about some of the humor that's in Link's Awakening just right there with like the narrator and just some of the simple messages that happen Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Link's Awakening. So we're going to talk about funny moments. We have a bunch of tweets from uh, listeners about some funny moments that they found. Yeah. And I feel kind of weird about this. I had, I didn't have many for this episode. I had like three. All of them were included in the, in the public tweets. <laughs> you are just, in general, not amused by this game. You know, either. I think there are funny moments in Zelda, but when I was pressed to like really think about it, I was like, oh, I don't know. I think I really attach much more to the epic open-worldness than like the characters, I have to say, which is weird, because I usually I do enjoy narrative and character-driven things. But I think with Zelda games, usually I just want to be Link as an avatar, you know, avatar, Link as my avatar, and I want to go, I think, usually. It's also hard to remember, like, specific bits of dialogue. So I get it. Um, I looked up some, like, I tried to find some lists of, you know, I know there are funny little conversations or little sentences here Mm. and there. And I tried to look some up, and I did find a kind of good list of stuff in Breath of the Wild. Refresh your memory a little, huh? Uh, Yeah, a little bit. All right, that's um, cool. And just some general funny goings on. I'll be excited to talk about those things. I'm going to do a little bit of listener feedback first over on, I thought this was very interesting, Celeste Roberts over on our Patreon page and you can find our Patreon over at www.patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast, blah, 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 blah. Um, We have a bunch of different tiers available over there, but Celeste Roberts, who was actually our original patron ever. She's our girl. She's she's becoming a friend. We've never met Miss Roberts or her husband, but they, I think they live in the East, but if they ever find their way to the Midwest, it'd be fun to meet up with them, I think for sure. Cool. Uh, regardless, not regardless, in ad- additionally, <laughs> forget all that. Um, additionally, she uh, mentioned she, so we were in our, our outfits and armor episode. There was a mild aside before we went to break where I started asking you about what it was like to play a character. But often, so oftentimes the leads in video games are male characters mm-hmm. because so oftentimes they're designed by males. At least they were back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And there is a little bit more representation, I think, in the video game industry now, but still certainly, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I kind of asked you what that was like and you spoke to that. So uh, Celeste here commented about that a little bit as well. She said here, I love the discussion about having playable characters that share your gender. I think representation is important. I didn't uh, realize it 
consciously as a child, I always chose the female fighters in video games, and I always chose Dixie Kong in the Donkey Kong Country games, uh, two and three since she wasn't in the first. I would love to experience a Zelda game where Zelda is a playable character, not counting Hyrule Warriors. Fair enough. Link would not necessarily have to be in distress, but how cool would it be to use Zelda's power? If Peach can have her own game, then another princess should too. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, or if it, even it being like 50-50, where, you know, sometimes mm. you're Link over here and sometimes you're Zelda in another part of the world. Oh, that'd be fun. You know, still trying, going after the same end goal of defeating Ganon and whatnot. And So your gimmick could be that somehow you're spiritually connected or type, type, uh psychopathically connected um and so you can hot swap back and forth maybe a la resident evil zero a little bit which i actually did like that mechanic mm. in resident evil zero you're able to switch back and forth there yeah. they did it not through magic they did it by having the characters have walkie talkies so the idea was they could communicate with each other sure but i think that'd be a lot of fun or i'm playing a different game totally different game right now um where you play as one like a little boy and then you can play as a little girl in the same like story which game is that um, it's called, oh, it's okay. oh my gosh, it. oh my gosh. little nightmares. I think oh, really? it's called. It's oh, okay. on switch. Yeah, sure. Sure. A lot, um, of, a lot of good games coming out on digital, on the switch store. Yep. Lately. Little nightmares. So <laughs> you can, and you can choose which one you want to play first. And yeah. the story is different depending on, or I think can be interpreted differently depending on which character you play first. So I, and I've only played as one character so far. I'm yeah. not sure how it's going to be different playing as the other gender. Did you pick a, the boy or the girl? I picked the girl first. There it is. Yeah. Um, well, it actually uh, says it's recommended that you play the girl first. Too. Oh, no, <laughs> so, that's like two steps backwards. One no. step forward, two steps back. Come on, play the easy mode, play the girl. Well, I don't know if it's easy or uh, maybe it is Hopefully simpler. it means we'll narratively. See. And my friend who recommended the game to me said, I wish I had played as a little boy first. Oh, interesting. But since the game told me to, I listened to the game. I'm sorry, Sarah. Fair enough. <laughs> Anamusha uh, for the Wii did that as well. I had a male and female character and they, it was one storyline, but those characters moved through the levels in different ways. Yeah. Um, and that was I a mean, side scroller. The game is called the legend of Zelda. I don't think anyone would be mad if you played as Zelda. You so know? wouldn't it have to be then? I'm just joking right now. Wouldn't it have to be the legend of link, the adventures of Zelda? No, oh, God, <laughs> no, I think, I think that is something that, could be realistically expected in a future game because I think a lot of people are asking for that or you know, would be totally okay with that. I mm -hmm. don't think that's out of the realm of possibility, but we'll see. Yeah, it would be neat. It would be cool. Um, I like the idea. Celeste, thank you for the the thoughts. I have an, an iTunes review that I want to talk about here real quick, which is also kind of, I thought it was kind of nice, very, very sweet. Uh, Mr. Caleb Webb, who is fairly present on our Twitter accounts and I believe even in our Discord and stuff like that, he left us an iTunes review, which was very kind and I wanted to share it. He said, Another Zelda podcast is one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to. David and Kate hit topics on The Legend of Zelda that no other podcasts focus on and only brush by in passing. What's more, I can listen to the podcast with my kids without fear of harsh language or inappropriate topics of discussion. I would absolutely recommend. Okay, well, that's really, really cool and sweet of you to say, Caleb. But this this comment, this it's coming up again with this, like, I listen to it with my kids thing. Yeah. We've heard that a couple times now in tweets and reviews. And we I don't think we ever set out to make a kid-friendly show. But I'm so happy that, that you know, that's interesting. Zelda's been around for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So there are now parents... Who have children have kids. who are experiencing Zelda. Yep. Farts, farts, farts. That's for you, kids. <laughs> See, that one's just for you. I can't believe you just did that. Um, that's funny. Uh, yeah, right now, like 10 kids are laughing. Um, <laughs> yes. She said farts. Uh, I said farts, farts, farts. Yes, indeed, indeed. Wait. No, well, so The Legend of Zelda is a kid-friendly game, I think, yes. for, uh, for the most part. Like, some of it's a little creepy, a little weird. Um, but you've talked about your nieces playing Breath of the Wild, just running around, doing whatever they want to do, right? Yeah. So it's like, it's not, it's violent in a cartoonish way or violent in a non-realistic way. Yeah, I don't think there is much it's a realistic violence in the Zelda game. Yeah, it's a fantasy. These are creatures. You're not like... Not a lot of blood. Bad guys usually right. leave by a puff of smoke or something. Right, right, right. So, and there's a story. And so I think it's a 
game that kids can yeah. and should play. So why not? I love it. Caleb, I, I actually, he, he tweeted something about this a little bit too. And I think he had mentioned that like he listens to it in the car when he's driving, yeah. when he has to pick up his kids or this or that. And it's one of the podcasts that he knows he can listen to safely. And that's awesome. Cute. We don't try to be clean. We just do whatever we do. And we just try to make it so that as much people can listen. That's really sweet. I just swear a lot before and after we're done <gasps> recording and then just get it all out of my system. Kate Fisher. What? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> farts, farts, farts. Oh, <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's talk about, well, speaking of actually mildly PG rated content or PG 13 rated content or innuendo and mm-hmm. things that are somewhat on the edge. Fart jokes. No, I don't know. I suppose that tonight's episode might toy around with some of that actually. Maybe a may. little bit. Uh, We're talking about funny moments in Zelda. Yeah. There's definitely some odd moments. We have both spoken to moments that might be a little like oddly sexualized once in a while. That's a little odd, a little funny, Mm -hmm. sometimes uncomfortable. Um, Sometimes there's many characters that have crushes on Link and they say things that are, you're like, what now? That was going to be one of mine. Yeah. And I didn't have any notes written down, but I was thinking about this um, earlier today about how that's just kind of a funny running gag that everyone just falls in love with Link. And sometimes the expressions on his face are like, uh, like I think when Telma in Twilight Princess is flirting oh. with him, he goes, like he has this expression on his face. Like, uh, I don't, I'm not down for I that. I feel like I remember Link having a lot of expressions in Twilight Princess. Princess. Yep. A lot of side eye. Well, you know, speaking of that side eye, that's interesting because as I mentioned in one of our Instagram posts, um, Twilight Princess runs the same engine as Wind Waker. And you might recall that in Wind Waker, they were very excited about having Link's eyes look at items. Yeah. yeah. Remember, that was part of like the mechanics of the engine. Mm -hmm. So technically that code is still there in Twilight Princess. So Link looking at things and having his eyes move around in Twilight Princess, that code is probably the, almost the exact same code that was running in Wind Waker. Hmm. Obviously, the aesthetics are very, very different. Yeah, he looks so sassier. He looks a little sassier. So <laughs> once you put it on a more real face, it doesn't look like Sonic the Hedgehog running around in right. Hyrule. Um, it comes off as expression, genuine expression. And mm-hmm. maybe that's where some of that side eye comes from. But anyway. <laughs> I like it. So we have we have many, many tweets um, about funny moments. I want to start with one from Max Olmsted who tweeted us. Now, Max actually is one of the producers of the Top Hat Balloon Show, which I've spoken about in the past. Is Top Hat Balloon Show is one of the new shows that will be coming out on 6.5 Media, which is the media network that uh, I am starting that also hosts this show. So that's yeah. all very exciting. A little bit of cross. It's like mommy and daddy company. <laughs> what? Six five is, is like the mommy and daddy company. And then. Oh, the parent company. And this is the, okay. Very yes, good. Very good. I know. I was just saying in mommy a cuter daddy. way. Got it. All for those kids <laughs> with the farts. <laughs> there you go. You like that kids? <laughs> okay. Stop, don't, that's my horrible don't kid. Do that. All right. So anyway, he uh, tweeted us simply a gif of Hetsu doing his little maraca dance with the exploding glitter at the end (laughs) when Hetsu decides to, when you give him enough Deku seeds and he upgrades your inventory in Breath of the Wild. Yes. And I will say I legitimately laughed at the timing of the pop of those... (laughs) maracas it's just as absurd well. the dance is fine you're like the, the camera's cutting around all different angles and the music's playing and hetsu's almost doing a darinia style dance of joy mm-hmm. and glee but he finishes and just the right amount of time waits it's like just a half second and then the maracas go yeah and shoot out some glitter yeah. and you're like what <laughs> I love it. I like to think that that made everyone laugh when they first saw that, that animation. That was I a can't legit. Imagine it didn't. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that was a legit laugh out loud for me. <laughs> I was like, what? Anyway, so you've got a bunch of notes here as well. I'm going to keep referring back to our listener. Sure. Tweets. Um, well, there are lots of jokes in Breath of the Wild. There's actually the thing that kept coming up on my internet search results when I was kind of like looking for a list to draw from. And not all of these are winners, but there is a a list that's just like funny things from Breath of the Wild that you might not even stumble upon because obviously there's so much to read in journals. There's so mm-hmm. many people to talk to that some of these I'm like, I have never seen this before. Like You're referencing a list right now that you found on the internet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. excellent. Um, we'll, so, throw the, we'll try to throw those that link in our show notes. Yeah, so some of these, um, so there's a journal entry that you can come upon, which I definitely didn't, but it's in this list. And I'm, I'm hoping these are legit and not Photoshopped. I can't imagine why they would be. Okay. But um, so one of them says, the new guy in town looks like he really knows how to tune a bow. I hope he comes by and knocks an arrow for me. It's been way too long. Oh my goodness. Lonely arrow girl. (laughs) 
it's a journal entry. Holy cow. So um, It's in some stable somewhere or something? Uh, that, that, That's what I would imagine, yeah. So parents, you don't have to explain that one to your kids. But uh, I thought it was pretty funny. Like well, She's out of arrows. She just needs... She just needs someone to knock an arrow for her. Wow. <laughs> that's a thing. Tune her bow. Ooh. I don't know if that's funny. <laughs> that's uncomfortable. I think anyway. that's funny. Um, yeah, I know. I understand. There's another one. There's a screenshot somewhere on here and it's uh these kids talking about link as he goes up to one of the stables so he's because there's like kids kind of hanging out at, at some of these stables mm-hmm. and he's talking to them and the kids are talking to each other and one of them says you're right he's got eyes that just say like nothing in this world matters to me except horses and then uh they keep going um Bro, his head is filled with horse stuff, right? That's right. Just look at his eyes. Right now in his head, it's all horses, 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 food, and horses. Are you right? sure about this? Yeah. This is real? I think I remember seeing that one. My goodness. It's a, There's a lot of weird, funny stuff in Breath of the Wild. I think I don't speak to the kids very much in Breath of the Wild, and I need to start talking to them. They're funny. I, that's I probably like where them. they hide. I, I spoke to a couple kids in Hatno Village because you need it for a couple quests. Yep. But oftentimes I do kind of avoid the kids. Maybe They're pretty funny little guys. Kids say the darndest things. <laughs> Apparently someone horses, else. Horses, 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 food horses. Horses, that horses, is funny. horses, food horses. I mean, when you think about it, in Breath of the Wild, you are riding a horse a lot, probably. Probably, and you're chomping down food, <laughs> which I saw a meme as well saying like, hold on, batty. I got to narf down this steak right now. Like, <laughs> just hold on. I got to eat all this food. That is funny because in the Pause. mechanics of the game. Yeah. Yeah. The world pauses as you eat food. So if you imagine that as right. the perspective of the world, he's eating food in like 0. 0.0 seconds. Right. <laughs> or just everything is freezing around him. He's like matrixing yeah. a lunch. Yeah, right. I, I like it. it. Um, there was something else that if you come upon someone riding a horse in Breath of the Wild and you just talk to the like the traveling merchants, apparently one of them says, here's a secret to keeping dry on a rainy day. And then he says something else and he says, simply don't go outside. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. That's super helpful. That reminds me of when I was a kid in the, uh, we went camping up in Wisconsin. We went to some touring thing and it was like the weather stone. We've all seen the weather stone. If the wet, if the, this is a weather stone, if the stone is wet, it's raining. If it's mm-hmm. hot, it's sunny, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Same kind of humor. <laughs> the stone is wet. It is raining. Don't mm-hmm. go outside. Um, I'm seeing I what else dads I had. exclusively came up with the, the weather stone. You th- oh, dads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a dad joke. Yeah, actually. Yeah. How to avoid the rain. Don't go outside. That is a Don't dad go joke. Outside. Too. Oh, dad. Traveling merchants. You're Come such on. a dad. <laughs> I've got one here from, I, I'm going to go to our tweets real quick. If yeah. You don't mind. Uh, this is one that I actually did have that I thought was funny that I thought about. Um, I remember this moment and I almost cringed. It wasn't so much funny. Maybe I cringed, but it was that funny kind of cringe. Uh, SoFi uh, here who goes by at Legend of SoFi. He replied to our tweet by saying, taking a personal heartfelt letter and sliding it under the bathroom door for someone to use as toilet paper in (laughs) Skyward Sword. Thanks a lot. There's a lot of, uh, there's a few toilet jokes. There's a couple toilet paper jokes. Uh huh. I think it's a bait and, not a, maybe not a bait and switch. I think the whole puzzle of it is you're supposed to think like, really? Am I really going to give this to this person? Should, maybe I go find like bad paper somewhere or just mm-hmm. paper. You know what I mean? No, he wanted a good quality letter <laughs> for the toilet. Uh, I saw a meme online saying, why I'm afraid to use the toilet. Hands. <laughs> Hands from Zelda. Hands. I love it. Hand toilet, toilet hands. It's so weird. I know it is very odd. Because um, when you look at when you play the Game Boy games, the implication is that the human is down in the toilet. Yeah, I mean, what, what? Why only the hand coming out? Wouldn't it's the, all that can reach the eyes and mouth coming out? Wouldn't no that way. like be pleasanter for they're deep down in there, person? Slim Dog Millionaire style? Oh my poor toilet person, <laughs> toilet ghost. I don't know. But yeah, because they do kind of wave. They yeah, wave, wave and wiggle a little. Why just a hand. That's very unsettling. I don't. I don't blame this person for being afraid <laughs> of using the toilet. Um, one thing that I just had in general as like a common theme mm. is cuckoos. Yeah, that's funny. They are Cuckoo? funny little guys. <laughs> little cuckoos. So I first experienced the cuckoos in Ocarina of Time because that was the first game I played. So I was like. What are these little guys? Oh, that's interesting. Can I hit this thing? Yeah, I can hit this thing. Can I keep hitting this thing? Yeah, I can keep hitting. Oh, no. A cuckoo in Ocarina? Yeah. Tell me. They're in Kakariko Village. 
you have to collect. Remember, you have to throw them all into the fence. Oh, I was thinking of the Kui Kui guys oh. from Wind Waker. Yeah, the cuckoos or cuckoos. cuckoos yeah, got yeah. it. The chickens. Yes, the chickens. Fi- oh my gosh, I'm so glad. I mean, I know those what we're things are funny now. too. Mm-hmm. Well, That's what I thought of. Kui Kui. Anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. so y- your good buddies, the cuckoos. Cuckoos, cuckoos. They're they're in like. Every get they're running gig. It's like this is something that the creators of the game understand, yep. know that people think it's funny. They, so much so that it was worked into the logic of Breath of the Wild, where you can have an enemy accidentally hit a chicken and then gets attacked by the chicken. I was gonna bring that oh, up. Oh, yeah, I interrupted, so, I'm sorry. No, so yeah, if your enemy hits the chicken instead, that chicken is your buddy now and your ally and attacks them instead. Which, it's uh enemy of my enemy kind of thing. Yes, is my <laughs> friend, yeah. So um yeah, so they actually first appeared in Link to the Past. That's where they originated. And back. Really? Yeah. Maybe and that's we should, when they started attacking Link if he attacks them first. I feel like we should mention then. We, maybe I was going to save this for our final episode, but you and I, we've decided we're going to bite the bullet. We feel, I feel personally, uh, Ill, ill-equipped to talk about Zelda games by having never beaten A Link to the Past myself personally. In fact, mm-hmm. I don't even really care for that game that much. We've spoken about it many times in these episodes. I feel that you feel similarly about that game. It's a game you haven't finished. Can't. It's hard to go back to. Mm-hmm. We've both decided we're going to do it over break. Season two, maybe episode one, season two. I think we're going to review Ooh. that game because we're going to have a couple months to play it during the over the holiday season here. Mm-hmm. Give it a try. Oh, you got a look in your eye that we'll I'm see. getting worried we'll about. We'll see. We'll see. Those older games I have I have trouble with. We have to do it. There is, so Switch Online, which yeah. I have subscribed to, mm. has The Legend of Zelda that I could play on my Switch. The original The Legend the original, of Zelda? original. But there's also some kind of like, I don't know, there's some kind of special version or specialness to it. I haven't really done the research on it yet, but there's some badge on it that says like special. So I, I think, don't know what that is. Yeah, maybe it like gives you the ability to do speed runs or something. I don't know. Um, Are you saying that you'd almost rather well, review the original? It's tempting for me to not play that one because it's on my Switch, and I think it'd be cool to play that game on on the Switch. But I know you have a honeymoon over the break too. I think. I mean, we're gonna play all the games, but what what my point is is that it's hard to ignore <laughs> when I keep turning on my Switch and seeing that like, hey, play me. I Oh, I get it. I get it. I kind of want to play Majora's Mask before playing A Link to the Past, but I feel I really want to play Majora's Mask soon, but maybe we save that for the middle of season two. Ooh, we have so many to do still. Why don't we try A Link to the Past? Yeah. And have I'm that be our... It's just going to be hard for me to keep not... I think it might be a little hard for me too. I'm, I'll, I will say. This, the, this game, I'm sorry, people will be upset with me, but I don't... I have a hard time getting through this game. I don't necessarily enjoy playing A Link to the Past. What are you looking at? My cat's adorable. Oh, He's sleeping. Oh, He's okay. bored by us. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anywho. He's so, like, play it already. Jeez. Just shut I'm up. Out. So going back to our uh, cuckoos, um, what's also funny about these things is that one, there's a, one of them is in charge of the village of cats in Twilight Princess. What? You remember the hidden village where you have to like find all the, is it, you have to find all the cats. You have to kill all the problems or whatever bacabins, yeah. that are there. And then you have to like talk to the cats when you're in the wolf As form, wolf. I think. Oh. But the leader of the cats is a chicken. <laughs> I don't remember that. I remember yeah. this area. I vaguely remember it. Yeah, There's a little old lady there to too, the, isn't there? Yes. Like she says, oh, thanks for saving. But then you go back as a wolf. And the chicken's in charge. I wonder if I never That's went back funny. as a wolf. Do you have to? Uh, I like it though. Chicken in charge. I think you have to go back. Mm-hmm. I don't think you have to talk to the chicken, but I just thought that was funny that the leader of the cats was a chicken. Yeah. That was my favorite show in the nineties. Chicken in charge. Oh. See, I've got jokes too. I have to go. I'm not a dad. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm not a dad. Uh, you are in your soul. You, you take that back. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. You close your mouth right now and take that back. All right. Uh, anyway. Yeah. That, that is funny. Do you, did the cuckoos in a link to the past? If you hit them, do they attack yeah. you? I think they do, right? Yeah. They fly in from That's all over the place. That's where it first happened. And then cool. they just kept doing it in every game and every game and every game and every game. And I, I think it's funny every time. Um, yeah. Those poor chickens. They definitely show up in the Oracle games. <laughs> yep. And I don't think, I think you can only kill them in like one of the games or something. Oh. They, they usually can't be actually killed. But That's um, right. also in Twilight Princess, there's the Flight by Fowl game. Do you remember that? Yeah. So it's funny because some of the 
cuckoos want to leave that game. They're like, please get me out of here. I'm trapped here. And then if you come upon others later, they're like, I would do anything to leave this town and go to the game and be part of the game. Oh, and so, wow. Yeah. They, the game designers invest a lot in their chickens. There's an entire side story. There. I know. That's amazing. It's just, yeah, so that was like one of my themes of funny things is the cuckoos and how often they come up and in the various ridiculous ways, like, oh, this one's in charge of the cat village and this one wants to be part of the game. This one wants to leave the game because they're unhappy with their life. Well, once you can talk to the animals as Wolf Link, I guess that does open up a whole fun Mm -hmm. area. It's a a bit like the kids in Breath of the Wild. It's all these hidden little narratives that you can find. Or maybe they don't reward you with, 20 gems, but at least they reward you with some funny narrative. A giggle. Yeah. Um, How about we, why don't we go to break and come back? I have one last cuckoo thing. Oh. I'm sorry. So. So disappointed. (laughs) But then that's it for cuckoos. No, 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 that's cool. So in uh, Breath of the Wild, one of the characters says, uh, my wife left me today. The last thing she said to me was, what's more important, the cuckoos or me? I chose the cuckoos. Whoa. What what game is that in? Breath of the Wild. Oh, I lied. That's a journal. So you don't talk to this person, but it's another journal journal entry. entry. Do you know where it is? Because I want to go read that. I don't know. I know the character is the bow master, hmm. but um, bow yeah, it's funny. I love it. I, there are, I, I need to cookies. search for more journals because obviously they are breath of the wild, chock full of gems, full of treasures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That game you can, you can like, I have the motorcycle. I am quote unquote done with that game and I still dive in and have fun with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So many jokes to be found. Dave. I guess so. I guess so. All right. Yes. Let's go to break and we'll come back and keep on talking about stuff. Cool. Funny stuff. Funny stuff. Okay. Bye. Hey everyone, David Geisler here, and I am very excited to share that we have just launched our Patreon page for another Zelda podcast. Patreon is a great way for creators to grow their content, and we're really looking forward to using this space as a way to say thank you to our listeners. We'd love to have your support, and we've put together some rewards that we're pretty excited about. Things like additional uncut bonus content, custom wallpapers, and of course, early access to all of our episodes. So if you like, after the show, head on over to our page at patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find a link to the page in our show notes. Thank you very much. Hey, everybody, David Geisler here, and I just want to take a minute to tell you about a new show that's coming out from 6.5 Media. I am here with the creators in the studio. Gentlemen, how are you? Max and Jordan, how, how are you? Absolutely wonderful. Doing great. <laughs> that's determination over there, Max. Of course. Uh, why don't you tell my listeners of Another Zelda Podcast what uh, this show will be and what it's all about? Well, I'd like to tell you about our show. It's a sketch comedy show. Mm-hmm. We do sketches from two to five minutes about various topics, and it's going to be released uh, next year at some point. <laughs> next year in January. We're going to be releasing it weekly. And Jordan, what is this magical show called? It's called the Top Hat Balloon Show. Mm. I'm super <laughs> excited for it to start releasing. So am I. It's been yeah. wonderful making it with this guy over here. M- Mr. Max Olmstead. Yeah. Despite my antics. Yeah. His <laughs> antics that he continues even in his day-to-day life, and we can't escape it at any moment. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, well, gentlemen, uh, it's It has been really fun to see the rough cuts coming in. I'm very excited for this show to come out. Uh, Like you said, it's going to be a sketch comedy show, quick little bits that will come out every week starting in January. So another Zelda podcast listeners, we will probably talk about it one more time. But when season two of another Zelda podcast starts is when this show will come out. You'll be able to find it by searching the Internet for the Top Hat Balloon Show. Max, Jordan, it has been fun making this show, even though we're only in the beginning, only a couple episodes made so far. And uh, thank you for for being here and making the show, I guess. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you, David. David. Mm-hmm. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are back from the break. Kate and I are here talking about funny stuff. We just had to take a break from laughing so much. <laughs> laughing so much. <laughs> that is the weird thing about Zelda games is the humor in them, all of them, is odd. It's odd. It's subtle usually but um yeah yeah or it's like some someone dancing crazy oh yeah there's there's actually a lot of crazy dancing now that i'm going back and remembering it Mm. in my head there's a lot of crazy dancing there's like three things i can think of there's crazy dancing there's awkward advances towards link and then there's legit deep dive like funny moments that's what i think what we've been exploring so far i think there's also you might want to count the weird noises like when you come upon a character that goes Wow, that is true. That is a whole other other spectrum, and fair like, enough. That's got to be 
for a reason, right? Like you wouldn't come upon a person in real life that greets you as. Yeah, right. Probably. I agree with that completely. Um, Shane Kelly here tweeted us. This one's a little hard to talk about on the episode, but um, maybe we'll retweet it so that our listeners can find it. He said, this guy makes me chuckle every time. Love this screenshot I took. Can anyone meme it? And he presented a screenshot of Link in Skyward Sword reaching up to get something out of a shelf. And uh, this gentleman with a bun is giving him major side eye. And it does look (laughs) funny. I don't know if you can see it here, Kate. I did take a look at it, yeah. It doesn't quite work on the podcast, but I wanted to put that in there from Shane. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Game, Game Tripper UK at Game Tripper UK said the owl that talks in double negatives in Ocarina of Time, <laughs> forcing you to go through a full conversation again. It was frustrating at the time, but legitimately funny now. Didn't you not understand what I didn't say just then about how you should play this game? Yes or no? Yes or no? And then they give you yes or no. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of like, wait, is it no? Doesn't it also default on the one that automatically repeats? It defaults on no. I didn't understand. Right. So then if you just smash your button the way through that whole conversation (laughs) and then you'll hit no and then it does it all again. Okay, poor Gabor. Just such a trickster. Mm, and that reminds me of yet another meme that I found. I just found all the memes when I was researching this, this episode, but one of them is, uh, we need, we need, yeah, sorry. It kind of is in the same vein. You have 45 of these. Let's learn about it again. <laughs> like every oh, time yeah. you pick up an item, it's like, this is this thing. And I think yeah. in, Ooh, I think it's twilight princess when you're collecting things, it doesn't do it every single time. But then if you restart the game up again, it'll be like, you collected this thing. You just read my mind. I was going to, I was saying to myself, like when Kate's done with this point, I'm going to point out how Twilight Princess just resets every time you start playing again. Mm -hmm. You just said it. You're absolutely right. So they try to have it happen less in Twilight Princess. And I think in Breath of the Wild, it happens less too. The first time you find something, they make a deal out of it. But then I don't know. I think it might happen there because I remember reading like you found this piece of amber, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, my oh, gosh, right. I know. Like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It does not just pop up above you like Wind Waker or something. Yeah. So mm. that's always fun. That's you, fair. You found five rupees. That makes you smile. Shut up. No, it doesn't. Especially if I don't have room in my wallet. <laughs> oh, yeah. You found oh, 50 right. rupees. This is not for you. <laughs> Sorry, you can't fit it. Because that's back when some of the Zelda games, when it when the wallets were smaller. Mm-hmm. I think Breath of the Wild is there's not really a limit. I've gone easily over ten thousand. Uh, yeah, I ran into that a lot in Wind Waker when mm. you're finding the rupees oh, on the ocean did. floor. I remember you talking about that. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> in our Wind Waker review episode, you found fifty rupees. Just kidding. You found a hundred rupees. Just kidding. You found twenty five rupees. Just kidding. Because you found them, but the wallet wasn't big enough yet, right? You, you're gonna put this back and save it for later. No, I'm not. <laughs> put it in my wallet anyway. Put it in my pocket. Put it in my anything. <sighs> uh, Charles Stash here, um, who goes by at Annoying Chase, uh, he tweeted us three times. So I'm going to kind of jump into his tweets and jump back out and jump back in. One of his was, I think his first was, um, Osha's taking the blade, the Phantom Blade from Link in Phantom Hourglass. I kind of don't remember that, but he has money more here. Uh, Link getting launched by the exploding goddess statues in Wind Waker. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. There was a lot of comic timing in Wind Waker. They definitely <laughs> went for the cartoon aesthetic. Yeah. Link's face during Ar- Argoma's second form from Twilight Princess. And we were trying to remember this, Argoma. I think that's the big old spider maybe he was centipede. just terrified or something isn't that in the th- forest temple i think yeah maybe he does maybe he like does a big take like wow <laughs> you know alfonso shaking link in the beginning of spirit tracks to uh charles stash here put put down i have a few others from him as well maybe i'll read no if you're if you're checking it out that's fine if you're I'm doing trying to look i up think this, she's doing some live I'm, research right well, now i'm audience. trying to look up that character the the argoma Guy. Armagoma. Ar- oh, gotcha. Armagoma. In the meantime, Charles Stash uh, at Annoying Chase also tweeted, Captain Lineback faking his leg injury, then running off in Phantom Hourglass. That's fair. I remember that. That's pretty early in Phantom Hourglass. He's too scared to go into the Phantom, uh, the spirit dungeon, the one that you go back into many, many times mm. that you and I spoke about. And so Lineback's like, I can't do it. My legs hurt. And then literally runs away. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> I have never played that game, so. We'll get there. We'll get there. Aww, I have it. I saw his little things about that. uh that game. And I was like, oh, I kind of wish I had played it. Then I would have had more fan, funny moments. Yeah. Phantom Hourglass will come up on our list soon. We'll either play it on the Wii U virtual console or uh, we'll get ourselves a 3DS or a DS and I'm sure we'll find ways to play it. Cool. I mean, I have it on the DS, but my R button is busted on my DS. So it's, 
and you need that to hot you cue. rage pressed the R button I guess, too much. I suspect that probably the DS probably just fell on the floor over the last decade and like hit the R button and messed it up. Anyways, uh, let's see here. He also said Link getting electrocuted in Skyward Sword. Uh, Link <laughs> getting barrel cannon launched in Wind Waker. Yes. I think I know maybe what he's talking about in the Armagoma. So basically Link does the thing where he spins his sword and puts it back and then the music must change and it zooms in on his face and he's like, uh... <laughs> Oh, that's nice. That's cool. <laughs> like, he thinks he's done. But excuse me, like I just, <laughs> I just finished this. Oh, that's funny. I, I think like that's that. what he's talking about. I'm gonna have to the next time I, I'm, I'm planning for a Twilight Princess HD playthrough sometime in the next year, and I'll be looking out for that. That does yeah. sound funny. Um, I liked. I found a reminder of this for uh, when we played Minish Cap and Ezlo yeah. always saying like. I'm not scared. Everything's fine. And then you go somewhere and he's like, that was terrifying. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, I love that. That's your Ezlo voice. <laughs> Cause <laughs> I always thought old man for me, he was always like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Hurry up. Yeah. He's like, I'm a bird. <laughs> and for you, it's like, I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, like when you tried to ride the mine cart or something, he's like, oh yeah, everyone uses these to get around. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And then you get out and he's like, that was so scary. Yeah. Because it, cause it does move fast. It it's does. like, ah. Poor yeah. Ezlo. Like, that was funny. I'm so scared of heights. Everything's terrible. He's like a hypochondriac bird, <laughs> which I identify with completely. I totally get it. Oh, man alive. Um, there is, I like whatever, whenever there's a reference to Link being quiet, like, oh, you don't talk much, do you? <laughs> yeah, that's always or, a little uh, wink wink there. I'm sure you have a good reason for not, for being quiet right now. That one's from Skyward Sword. The biggest version of that is Zelda's. Uh, diary in Breath of the Wild in Hyrule Castle, which I think you found and read as well now, where she kind of, not mm-hmm. as a joke, spends pages talking about he's so silent, he's so strong, he's so... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, we get it. He, he's if, not talking. What if, oh, I was going to say, what if he was born without vocal cords, but he still goes, hi and hi yeah. and Right, it's true. He's things. not He's not that he way. He yells. Yeah. Right. Maybe he just never learned to speak. Well, in some of the games, and we've talked about this, in some of the games, they fade to black and come back. I think Twilight Princess does that, and I think Breath of the Wild does that, to imply that he said some things. Maybe he's using sign language. Perhaps. Ooh. I think it's very clearly just so that the so that Link is an avatar for no! the No! You're wrong. Yep. <laughs> very wrong. Charles Stash here also tweeted, pressing the bomb button and not realizing that it just set down a bomb, and that I should run or Ooh. throw it from Link to the past. But maybe you experienced it in another game. I have done that before when I have set the bomb to one of the two main action buttons and then forget that I have done that. And then oh, I think yep. I'm doing something else or that that button does something else. I go, oh, crap. And I have to run away. Get me out of here. Oops. Yes, indeed. Uh, he also mentioned here in a tweet, people complaining about the ice block puzzle from Twilight Princess. Oh, I don't yes. know. I didn't mind that puzzle. I like the I slide, the, slide the blocks around puzzle. Nope puzzles in any of the games it's terrible actually going along with that the the yeti is kind of funny in twilight princess how he keeps pushing link he keeps like shove, throwing him across the room every time that's like fair, you yeah. have pumpkins in your vest <laughs> give them to me that's and true. He like shoves him down on the ground so maybe it's like whenever there's like a, a bout of overacting or something that's uh-huh. always pretty funny in a zelda game link gets pushed over and falls on his butt a lot that's kind of funny did you connect with the the, the humor in wind waker I think so. I, I mean, I took the game for what it was. That was mm-hmm. the whole gist of the game. It goes along with the animation and the art style. So sure. It's I think I never here. like laugh laughed, but it was, it was like, oh, I see what they're doing here. I'm cool with it. They would do jump cuts. It was like, brink, brink, brink. And then he gets shot out of a cannon. Yeah. And, you know, there were moments where they, it was a clear tone. I think that was like an aesthetic tonal decision. Whereas sometimes with some of these other games, we're finding these little deep dive, awkward text box things, you mm-hmm. know, Link's Awakening is mostly, I don't think it's funny in tone, but it has a lot of that, like the humor in the narrator stuff. Yeah. I'm just a kid. What do I know? Yeah. Right. There I was it is. told this. There's the kids uh, being kind of sassy and a yeah. little meta. They're yeah. probably like my favorite part of that game. <laughs> of Link's Awakening. Because they keep bringing them up. Yeah. They're entertaining. They are funny in the beginning for sure. But I mean, Wind Waker has a lot of heart too. It has very really cute moments and grandma, she's so sweet. So it's not all just like gags and, and whatnot, but it is a lot of jokes in there. Anything else? We're, that's our tweets. That's kind of like the main list that I had. But every time I think about it, I kind of think of something new, which isn't totally useful for a podcast that we are <laughs> recording at one moment in time. But um, I mean, I've talked about before how Midna has been sarcastic and she's uh, like, oh, how convenient that we ended up here. And yeah. you just need to do this thing. Like she knows how to it's like she knows how to play the game. 
she's played the game before and she's just kind of like making funny remarks because she knows everything that's going on, but you don't. I think at the end of the day, thinking of people like the happy mask salesman and other characters, sometimes it's the awkward pacing of their reactions and perhaps the soundbite that is used. Mm -hmm. That is, but that's something that I've just grown to love in Mm -hmm. Zelda games. I think it happens less now, but like in those older games, just the awkward camera angles and pacing and reactions of some of the characters. And the, yeah, the silly voices. Yeah. There is an energy there though that I actually kind of like. Well, I obviously have way more exploring to do in Breath of the Wild because there were other examples that I didn't go that I didn't uh, go over on this episode. But I know <laughs> I kind of want to get back in. I did have uh, so there's one conversation that popped up that I did have this conversation. So I know this one is real, but it's when you're talking with one of the Gerudo ladies. Okay. And she's like, you have a place in my dreams, don't you? Did we meet for a reason? And you have two choices. And one of them is you're my dream girl. And the other is just a guy taking a walk. And so you're right. There are some like clever responses from your your choices are often pretty funny. So if you pick uh, you're my dream girl, she's like, oh, people warn me about uh, people who throw the words like dream girl around. Let's what? just forget we ever spoke dream girl. Nah, I don't have time to waste on you. Get out of here. She gets all Wow. Mad. Wow. And it's like, what is the point of this conversation? There is none other than to make you laugh. Just to make you laugh. That's it. Fill in the world a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's there are plenty other on this list. It's on dorkly.com. Hmm. So if you, it's called surprisingly hilarious jokes, hiding in Zelda breath of the wild. Fair enough. I like that. We'll throw that in our show notes yeah. so people can check it out as well That's on our fun. website, another Zelda podcast.com. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's pretty much all that's I cool. had in terms of specific examples that the point is that it's a funny game. It's not like ridiculous. Usually there is some ridiculous stuff, especially in the older games. Yeah. But the humor in the newer games is getting like more and more kind of subtle, sneaky. And I like it. I appreciate it. Something different. I always like when a game is funny. I'm playing another game now. That's called West of Loathing. It's on oh, I've heard Switch. Of it. Yes. And I think we posted about it. It feels like you're playing good games on Switch, by the way. Uh, well, that's because uh, Google, what are the best games to play <laughs> on Switch? But that one, and I think we posted about it before, is cool because at one point you have to get a horse and it suggests the yeah. horse's name, Epona, for you. I love it. It's like, what do you want to name your horse? And Epona comes up and I was like, yes, I As yes, like I the autofill that. or yeah. whatever? Yeah, right, and I was like, right. yes, I would like to do that. So, <laughs> but it's, and that's just a story reading game. Like you just read you just read the whole thing. Oh, it's man. it's so funny though. So I always appreciate a funny game or even just, nice. you know, a funny little joke within a game. It makes it so much more enjoyable. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I don't need to be fighting and attacking and being stressed out the entire time. Sometimes I just want to like giggle at something. <laughs> Darn I like it. it. I'm appreciating. I think you have a little bit more of a, a knack for sussing out these moments than I do. And I'm happy that I'm learning about some new ones tonight. Yeah, just... Pay more attention to those journals. I guess guess so. I guess so. I'm paying attention to upgrading a tunic or something, apparently, is what I'm paying attention to. Oh, David, your priorities (laughs) are totally out of order. Out of order. Though I did enjoy reading some of the journals for sure. Yeah. Kate, I think uh, think that's it. Maybe this was a slightly quicker episode, but I think the conversation is done. I don't want to stretch it out, you know, or whatever. We're going to have a longer episode for our finale Mm -hmm. talking about Ganon. And you guys can send us more of your jokes. We've already gotten a few so far, but I love to see and hear more and see what you guys think is hilarious in The Legend of Zelda. I would enjoy that for sure. You can tweet us at another Zelda pod or you can find our discord and uh, also talk to us about it on there. It's a little bit more of an internal chat kind of thing, but a lot of conversations start happening, which is always a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Kate, if people want to find you personally on the old interwebs, where can they do that? I'm on the Instagram at I only take cat pics. Marvelous. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Rapture Paint and the actual show Another Zelda podcast can be found on Twitter at Another Zelda pod, like I've already said. Mm-hmm. Another Zelda podcast on Instagram. You can search us Another Zelda podcast on Facebook and iTunes and Google and YouTube and oh all of it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh-huh. I'm full of jokes, too. Um, um, oh, man, I'm like so thrown off I right now. I threw you off. I threw you no, off. No, it's fine. And let's see. Uh, that's it for that. Um, 
So next, next week is Gannon. If people want to tweet us about yeah. Gannon. Oh, yeah. iTunes, leave reviews. Google, leave reviews. There's not much more to say. Bloody, 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 blah, yada, yada. Listen, this yada. season's almost over. We're done. We're over it. I can't wait. Get, talking about Gannon next week is going to be a lot of fun. Our next episode. Yeah. All the different iterations. I think we'll even track the timeline a little bit of sure. perhaps demise into Gannon and all of that. Maybe we do do a timeline. <laughs> he said do do. Maybe we do do a timeline vertical slice of Gannon through the timeline. Would that be nice? Sure. I like it. There's plenty material to to take from and we're there. off for a he's month a, or so. he's a big guy mm-hmm. we're gonna be story. off for a month or two you and i will be playing a link to the past and we'll be back in season two awesome Woo. the penultimate episode about Very gangs exciting. and giggles today. <laughs> what was that gannon's gangs of giggles or something G- gannon's giggle gang that's what that's what kate was saying before we started pushing that's our tonight. new podcast name goodbye everybody <laughs> gannon's giggle gang mm-hmm. love it all right kate I think that's that. I'll see you next week for our next episode for our finale. Okay, bye. Ooh, a little tonation there. (laughs) Nice.